So let's talk about how PDFs and CDFs are related. Let's say we have a random variable, let's call it x, whoops, x. And we're looking at the PDF for that random variable here. So we use per continuous random variable, we would label that as little f of x. And then we are looking at the CDF, the cumulative density function, usually labeled big F of x. And let's say that our random variable is defined on the interval 0, 1. So that means well, we know a number of things already. Let me use a different color here to make sure we can see that. That the PDF outside that interval will be zero uh, will be zero here as well for the cdf we'll get to that in a moment so firstly what does the the pdf describe that describes the density for this so we know we discussed that previously the density is not equal to the probability that the random variable x takes a particular value little x. Okay, that is not the same because that for a continuous random variable will always be equal to zero. So that's not what the density is. Remember for a PDF, it gives us a graphical representation of the probability for an interval. So let's draw a PDF here. Let me just draw one. I need to do that in plaque again. Okay, so let's say it starts very slow, but then it goes very steep up. And then perhaps there is, you know, quite a bit of probability over here, but it goes down to zero. Okay, so let's say it's this one. That's the PDF. Remember, when we had uh, two, two values here, let's say A and B, then it was the interval The probability that x lands in this interval which is represented by this by this area here okay that's what the pdf was so let's for reference let's use these points a and b as well so what does the cdf give us well the cdf gives us actually a probability okay so for instance f at a gives us the probability that the random variable takes a value smaller or equal to a. So we can actually graphically now try and indicate that the probability that x is smaller or equal to a is really on the PDF. We can also see it because that is the size of this area. Okay, that is the size of this area. And let's say that's possibly that's less than half. Let's say I just take a value here. Let's say that is 0 0.4. Okay, and we perhaps know that that's the size of this area. Well, that means that the PDF here, sorry, the CDF at that value A is going to be 0 0.4. Okay, so this is where the CDF will go through. And let's say the probability, let's use a third color, let's use S, okay. The CDF at B is the same as the probability that X is smaller or equal than B. Well, let's make that, that is now this entire area here. Okay, everything up to here. And let's say again, I make that up. Oh, that looks like 0 0.6. Remember the area under the, the entire PDF is one. Well, if that was 0 0.6, that means at B here, we are at 0 0.6. So the CDF would go through these two points. Now there's another thing we know about the the CDF, let me go back to black, and that is that the maximum value for this is going to be one. 
So what we know about the C CDF is that before, as our random variable is defined on the interval between zero and one, okay, there is zero probability that our value is smaller than anything negative. So we have the CDF here zero. All the probability occurs up to the value one. So the CDF from this point onwards is going to be one. Okay, it's going to be one. And in between it goes through these two through these two values. Now, there's another thing we need to realize here is that the higher the higher the PDF is, let's say at point A, it's the PDF is the highest. That means at point A, our CDF will have the steepest slope because that means we're adding the most probability in this area as we move from left to right. So here the slope is going to be fairly steep. At point B, the PDF is lower. That means the slope at this point is going to be somewhat lower. Okay, higher values of the PDF mean, mean lower slope. Uh, sorry, higher slope of the CDF. So how does that CDF going to look like approximately? Okay, we are starting fairly slow, but then the slope will increase until we have maximum slope here. And then it will get slower and lower until we hit one. Okay, so this is how that CDF approximately will, will look like. Okay, and to the right of the sample space, it's going to be one. To the left, it's going to be zero. So there are a few properties of the CDF that arise from this sort of combination of properties. So firstly, the CDF is going to be in the interval zero and one. Okay, so it never gets larger than one and never lower than zero. And as we know this one, okay, the, prob the probability for an individual value is always zero. That implies actually that the CDF is smooth. Because at no point as we move from A to A plus a little bit, we will see a jump of probability because there's always this probability is zero. Okay, so that means that the CDF is going to be smooth. So hopefully that helps you understand how the PDF and the CDF of a random variable are related to each other.